Hello my friends and welcome back to the Scott Reef project and today if you have a look we are in a wood in Worcestershire and my dear friend Coops is shoot he's just doing his gamekeeping rounds but I noticed he had three beautiful rabbits hanging up in the shooting lodge and I'm going to scab one and we're going to do something pretty cool man where do you look when you do a selfie so when you buy game you can buy it wrapped in cling film in the supermarket or get to know a geezer like this and come and choose your chosen beast last night's coops yeah well you know i'm gonna have to be a greedy leader and take the big one i hope you don't mind bro results <laughs> right cheers mate So I've just, uh, well, let's be honest, pinched is the word, those three rabbits off coops. Now I'm going to go back and prepare these. And I want to do something I haven't done before, and that's completely bone and stuff a rabbit. So let's do this. Just a nice little bimble through the countryside beforehand. Okay then, so we got those rabbits from my good friend Coops, who is a gamekeeper and a good all round guy and first we need to skin it so just take it not so lucky rabbit's foot off in come in and then off with its head right put that to one side now we're just going to skin it these have been chilling in the fridge so they might not skin as easy as i would like it to that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. So, you know, just get your thumb in. Once you start it off, get those legs out. Rabbit, it's one of those game meats that really doesn't benefit from hanging. A bit like pigeon, you know, you want to uh, clean it, maybe hang it overnight just for it to set. And then, look at that, look how easy that is. Job done. Just take its tail off. What a beautiful, beautiful specimen. So I'm just gonna go up through its sternum. Now you can see the engine room, its lungs nice and clean. Lovely little heart there, you can see that. glands there as you can see that is what puts a lot of people off cooking rabbit people who have cooked rabbits you know rabbit stews casseroles and they've got a real strong gamey smell and that is the culprit You have our rabbit completely boneless. So what I'm going to do then, because this is quite a very, very lean rabbit, is I'm going to take the legs off and I shall stuff it and place the legs into there and we will roll it and we will cover it in bacon. 
Now, I know a lot of you at home are thinking, my God, Scott, that's a lot of work. And to be honest with you, it is, you know, but this is something a little different, something a bit special. You know, it's gonna be a whole rabbit bones and we're gonna make a fantastic mushroom and pistachio nut stuffing to go in it. I mean, you wouldn't be making this every week, something for a special occasion, but yeah, let's gonna make this stuffing into the kitchen. Right, onto that wonderful stuffing. What I have in front of me is two dehydrated packets of mushrooms. I have got porcini, and in this packet here, this is a beauty, we have shiitake, portobello, and oyster mushrooms. Now, this dehydrated mushrooms are fantastic. I mean, they are quite expensive, but a little goes a long way. These will actually rehydrate to three or four times their size. I've got some fresh breadcrumbs, some butter, which I'm gonna fry my onion in. That's a medium sized onion, I might not need all that. And then some pistachio nuts, which I've just blitzed in my blender. I've left a few chunky bits in there for a bit of texture, a bit of bite, and two cloves of garlic. So the first thing I need to do is rehydrate these mushrooms. I mean, we already know this is gonna be epic. By all means, you know, just use button mushrooms or chestnut mushrooms, whatever you fancy. You know, if you don't have to put the pistachio in if you don't want to, change it to another nut. Or just make a nice sage and onion with sausage meat stuffing, you know. But I just thought this would go absolutely fantastic with the rabbit. Right, we've got to leave those 20 minutes to hydrate and you will see the difference. So just have a look at those beautiful, beautiful mushrooms there. How oh, they've all puffed up and that liquor is unbelievable. As you can see then, my onions have softened nicely. I'm gonna crank in the garlic. So we put our garlic in there now so we don't burn it and make it bitter. Drain those shrooms. So we'll get those in. We'll just gently start to cook those out. I mean, feel free to add more or less, whatever you want to do. We just want to cook those till they're nice and soft. And if it wasn't mushroomy enough, I'm just going to crank in a few more fresh portobellos. Almost professional guys and girls. So we get that in the mix. My mushrooms then, nice, soft and tender. What a beautiful selection of mushrooms. So, as you can see, most of the moisture is gone. What we need to do then is just turn the heat off and we're just gonna let that cool a while to about room temperature and then we continue to build. Next, we need to just blitz these mushrooms, now we don't want them a fine paste. We're looking to have a nice even texture. So we don't want them too fine, hence we will pulse them. We won't fully blitz them. So get them into my trusty old school Maggi mix and pulse away. Helps if you put a blade in. You see, we're not all perfect, are we? I am not gonna edit that out. We all make mistakes, man. Let's try it again. Take two. Just gently pulse away. Then get these shrooms into a bowl. And we can add Our breadcrumbs are oh, beautiful. And our pistachio, pistachio. I reckon, what, half maybe? No, all. And then just add the breadcrumbs a bit at a time. It's looking good. It's looking mighty fine, baby. Now we give it a quick seasoning, crank some pepper in, and then salt, 
watch the salt obviously the pistachios have got salt in and I suppose you can really add whatever you like here let's just have a go on it oh it's so nice it's one of those dishes you know as you go through the process you just know it's going to work because that stuffing alone is awesome so I've just dropped a bit of dried oregano in there I want to be able to lightly mould this so I'm just going to dry it out a little bit more remember we've got that turbocharged mushroom liquor if it gets too dry but that I must say is cool okay you beautiful people now it's time for the money shot as you can see then I've laid out a lovely bed of streaky bacon you can use pancetta or whatever ham you fancy prosciutto and I'm just going to put dear dear bunnykins on there that lovely lovely stuffing mix which I'm going to shape down the middle now this is where we get a little bit decadent what I have here is proper lardo if you don't know what lardo is go and check it out it is actually the cured back fat of a pig and it is unbelievable it's wafer thin cut here this is actually just pork back fat cured and I'll tell you what just hold it on your tongue and it melts absolutely stunning oh man so I'm gonna put a bit of that on I mean this is 40 British pounds a kilo just think of that 40 pounds a kilo anyway obviously you haven't got to add that it's a bit extravagant but hey ho you only live once baby that is pork's answer to butter got a low melting point we'll blend into all that beautiful rabbit and we will put the legs on top like that and then try try to bring it up together obviously we've got that bacon it's going to give us an alpine hand cover that up there now we just need to put a couple of strings around that but my god does that look good well there is the finished thing what a beauty i have trussed that up that beautiful whole bone rabbit with that wild mushroom and that lardo stuffing come on man that is decadent that is living on the edge looks absolutely stunning and i suppose the logical thing to do would be to get this in the oven and see how it looks or should we save that for another time i don't know oh okay then let's get it in the oven okay ladies and gentlemen the moment we have all been waiting for one whole boned rabbit stuffed with wild mushrooms pistachios and that lardo looks good doesn't it so what i did then is i started to brown this in a pan so a nice hot frying pan kept turning it just to put some color on it then in a very hot oven, Gas Mark 7, I'll put the conversion up there. I've given this 45 minutes and I checked for an internal temperature of 71 degrees centigrade. Then I took it out, lightly tented it with foil and let it rest for 15 minutes. Right, let's see what we got. Have a look at that. Just have a look at that. You better try a piece. Oh, look. Oh, without the string. Get that string off there a minute. Well, that is just stunning. If you look, it's still nice and moist that's that bacon and that lardo you can see 
the saddle in there, I'm going to cut another bit. Just look at it. It's cooked to perfection. It's juicy and that stuffing really is something special. Have a look at that. That is just crying out for some new seasoned veg, some mashed potato, a couple of slices of that on the mashed potato. Make a very simple gravy out of the pan juices. You know, reduce it down over the top. You have got a seriously, seriously good game dish. Well, I hope you enjoyed the episode of the Scott Reed Project. I enjoyed making it. That is really, really awesome. And it is a bit of a long haul, this video, but these are the kind of videos, masterclasses, that can't be shown in five minutes. So I do appreciate you sticking around. Also, if you haven't already, please click subscribe down there somewhere and find me on my social media, Facebook, Scott Ree and the Scott Ree Project, and also on Twitter, at Scott Ree. So until next time, take care. If you can, get a rabbit, give this a go. It will blow you away. I'll see you again sometime. Take care.